Okay, hi, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another edit with me video with your guys' submissions. I already did like a first part of this video. There's a lot of like various writing topics that I cover in that video. So I wanted to pick out like examples that for this video where I could talk about like slightly different stuff, <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah, same disclaimers obviously apply to this video. All of the suggestions, all of the feedback that I am making um, is more for example, just to kind of illustrate certain points. It's not necessarily because like the exact changes that I think the writer should make or anything like that. Once again, thank you to the writers who submitted. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to more, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think. Let's get into the pieces. Okay, so the first piece that we are going to look at today is a YA fantasy novel excerpt and the feedback was on character and tone. The writer did also provide some context, which um, I did put in the Google form because I wanted to know as much as possible about the story and like what's happening. This is the first chapter of the book. The main character, Deandra Castamont, is 17, biracial female, lives in her mother's house and has been for five years after an incident that happened during a school field trip where her friends died. Deandra has identity issues and struggles with accepting her powers. So I just highlighted a, a couple things. Um, so firstly, the writer has stated that this is the first chapter of the book. So I'm going to treat it as if that were the case and that this is the actual prose that's in the book. In these edit with me kind of videos, because I don't have the full context on the writer's intention with their entire book. I can't really say, you know, this is what you should do with your story um, or this is not what you should do with your story because there are no right or wrong answers. I mean, writing is very individual. It's very dependent on the type of story you're trying to tell and it's all about execution. So yeah, I preface with that because some of this piece, uh, it reads a little bit like it could be a summary or something out of, a, out of the writer's outline. So I'm gonna to touch upon later the concept of scene versus summary. Uh, for now, we're just gonna sort of take a look at the excerpt as it is and discuss it. The thing that immediately jumped out to me though when the writer was giving um, context on the entire piece is that uh, there was an incident that happened during a school field trip where the main character's friends died. That's a very like pivotal kind of moment and um, one comment that I left after I had read the entire excerpt was like, I want to know more about this. <laughs> I felt like that could almost be an opening scene or maybe a flashback at some point in the story, I don't know. Such an interesting introduction into this character because immediately a character has experienced that that's gonna like inform a lot about like who they are. But anyways, that's just like a side note. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this. Venorium's most awarded student turned out to be an Eidelin. An abomination is what she is. Deandra Castamont is an Eidelin and a threat to Venorium. And yet here she is hiding from the world that made her. Okay, this opening line, it's it is intriguing, but we don't know what an Eidelin is unless we read a book blurb or something like that, but just kind of taking the prose as it is. Because we don't know what an Eidelin is, it doesn't hit with the same impact as it could. The other thing, and I, I have seen this rule broken before, so I'm not saying that this is a blanket rule by any means, but there are three proper nouns in the opening sentence. I would be careful about doing that because it is a lot of new terminology that a reader is going to have like no context about, especially if this is the first line of the first scene of the first chapter. I think that there are like different approaches that you can take with your opening rather than just starting out with so many proper nouns. Not even confusing because like we could probably learn what it is as the scene goes on, but I think that there are, like if you're still editing this and you know, workshopping it, you can probably, um, looking at some different options for like an opening image or just like an opening line that's a little bit more, not like tethered so much immediately to your world building. I didn't line edit 
anything in this piece just because the feedback is on character and tone. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on, but just something I thought I would mention. Um, the next phrase that I wanna point out here is uh, this phrase, an abomination is what she is. I kind of want to point out psychic distance here. So psychic distance is um, how close or far a narration feels from between like the reader and the narrative, like how far away the narration is from the character, if that makes sense. So obviously something that's in first person is a closer psychic distance because we're like in their head. However, this phrase, it kind of sets up a tone that makes it sound like the psychic distance is quite far away because this sounds like the way someone else would describe a character rather than how a character would describe herself. I don't know if that's intentional. Um, if it is, that's fine. If it's not, I would watch out for that. If we're supposed to kind of like be following her perspective, it it's it kind of sounds a little bit weird um, for her to say an abomination is what she is in, in the narration, unless she's kind of saying it sarcastically. I don't know, I can't tell. But yeah, just to talk about character, since that is something that the writer pointed out that they wanted feedback on, um, I would think about the main character and um, just try to put her more at the forefront of the prose because the thing about having this like farther psychic distance is that the reader may feel less connected to a character. It's kind of like a closer psychic distance is a reader being put into a character's head and body. And then a farther psychic distance is kind of like watching that character from afar. And there's no right or wrong answer for, you know, like which one is better or worse, but they are very different and I think as writers we have to sort of decide which one we're doing because that's gonna affect the tone of the story. And keep in mind I am sort of speaking with a bit of a bias because I personally enjoy narration that does feel a little bit more intimate, it feels a little bit closer to um, the character even if it is in third person. So the next phrase here, Deandra Castamon is an idellin and a threat to Venorium. So this is I would say a show don't tell thing. We are being told a very like key element of both her character and the story. To state it outright in the opening paragraph um, might not be the most effective way to convey that information. Um, so I would consider ways that you can maybe imply this rather than stating it. Also maybe think about whether or not this is information that the reader needs to know right away immediately in the third sentence of the story. So maybe it can be implied in the way that other characters are speaking to her. The other phrase that I pointed out here was this, and yet here she is. When we say, and yet, like <laughs> when we have like one statement and then we say, and yet a second statement, it is because those two statements are supposed to be in contrast. But the phrase of Deandra being a threat to Venorium, which I'm assuming is a place, and then saying that she is hiding from this world, those two statements don't sound like they are in contrast to each other. Um, because if she is a threat to this place, then it makes sense that she would want to like hide from this world. So it's just a little bit of like, it's a minor thing, but the phrasing can be like a little bit confusing. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, after losing her mother five years ago, Deandra drops out of Nevin Academy, Venorium's top education facility, facilities, facility. Deandra returns back to the city she grew up in to take her mother's research, oh, to take after her mother's research project to figure out where Idellans get their powers from. Okay, this is an interesting core mystery. It's a very interesting motivation that this is what Deandra is currently pursuing. This is her driving force right now. Don't think that you need to state this in the opening scene. And if you do wanna convey that information in the opening scene, I would consider crafting a scene around this information rather than just giving the reader that information. And I'll get into that when we talk about scene versus summary. And just to talk about character again, a general rule of thumb that I like to follow, and again, this is just, this is just me, when it comes to openings, it is usually a good idea to, um, before you introduce anything related to the world or the character's motivations or some plot detail, it usually helps to establish like who this character 
is and like what their personality is before we get into all like the nitty gritty stuff because I think it's important that your reader cares about your character first before they really care about what they're doing, what they're after, what they're going through. So something like a character's core motivation, it you almost don't even need to have that immediately. Like I want to know what kind of person Deandra is um, before I even really know what she's after because for me to care about what she's doing, like for me to care about the plot, I first have to kind of care about her as a character and have some sense, in a, sense of idea of who she is. Uh, while locked in her mother's basement home, Deandra swore to exclude herself from the outside world. She's dangerous and she will be killed if she was found out by the people who live around her. Deandra, the girl locked out from the world, is once again sitting at her disorganized office desk, jotting down new symptoms she feels after using her powers. Deandra spends her hours of the day researching and testing her powers. On a free time, she's either making a pot of chicken soup for the week, designing and resewing a new set of blankets that she won't use, or listening to instrumental music. Like I said, I'm not going to line edit this piece or anything, but reading over it, the main thing I want to point out here is scene versus summary. So as an opening chapter, or even just in general, we are inundated with a lot of information all at once. So we're being told like what the main character's situation is, we're being told how she's feeling, what her fears are, how the world perceives her. We're also being told a lot of world building details. I think there's a mention of like a war. Yeah, an aspect of, about the world where the air is usually very clouded with dust and carbon dioxide. Yeah, we're also being told a lot of stuff about like the main character's powers and how society sort of views her. So the way that it's presented in its current form is a summary of facts and events. A scene is when we are being shown those things rather than being told those things like in a list. A summary is like, it's kind of like what the way that we would tell a story in real life. Like if I had a friend over and I was telling them about my day yesterday, I would summarize my day by saying, um, I woke up around 9 a.m. and then I ate breakfast and then I started working. I had a lot of meetings. Like, oh, like I'm recapping multiple things. A scene though is, is we're sort of like rooted in one point in time. Most times I would say a book is going to be made up of scenes, not summaries. Um, there are exceptions to this and there are ways to make summaries uh, sound super engaging. It, it may be the writer's intention to want to keep a more distant tone to the story. Like maybe this tone is intentional, but even with that in mind, I think some suggestions for making this piece feel more like a scene rather than a summary is to think about every scene um, as having a beginning, middle, and end. And rather than something that just like jumps around in time, this first part is like we're learning a lot of things about the character, um, just kind of like a list of things about like what she wants and everything. Um, and then here we're kind of jumping to her, her like sort of daily routine. I know it, it might sound a little bit extra to think about like having a beginning middle end but the beginning middle end doesn't need to be anything crazy um for a scene especially an opening i would say pick two or three main things you want to accomplish look at all the main ideas that you have and just pick some of them to explore. A reader doesn't need to know everything immediately. Personally, I think for an opening scene, I think character is always a good starting point. Like you want to show your world through the eyes of the character, which involves getting the reader to know your character. Um, so there's a lot of mentions here about how the main character is, is ostracized. Um, she has dangerous powers. The government fears her. Um, she's probably on the run? Is she on the run? So consider instead of saying that she's like an abomination and that the government fears her, what if the scene was like us seeing her at the academy and seeing how she's ostracized um, in context? Some of the main things that you can maybe explore in this opening scene is that 
Number one, maybe Deandra has like negative feelings towards her powers. She, you maybe want to establish that she's like currently living in a basement or her mother's home and that she's run away from the academy. Outside the air is polluted. You could also establish the fact that she doesn't want to be found. Like that's a pretty compelling aspect of her character. Then four, and I would say that this is like not even the most important part of an opening scene, you could maybe say like tease the external world conflict about the fact that there's a war and um the government's like looking for her and stuff like that the reason i say that that's not even the most important thing that you need to focus on um is because for an opening scene like i said as a reader i want to know more about who deandre is just as a person yeah just like how she's feeling rather than how the world sees her. Like we can get into these ideas later. Just to talk, I guess, a little bit more generally about character development. To be honest, character development will depend entirely on what kind of story you want to tell. I think there are a few different directions you could go. Uh, the trope of a character having like dangerous powers and like they hate their powers, that archetype is usually about the process of like learning to accept their powers. Um, so if you want to go that route, I think you can craft scenes that contextualize why her powers are dangerous, why does she hate it, um, did she hurt someone because of it, did someone hurt her because of it. And the way you can develop, uh, that she can develop is her maybe reclaiming her powers and using them in such a way that like benefits other people or helps her achieve some goal. Um, so to give you some more concrete advice, I would probably need to know your entire plot. Within the context of this excerpt, you may want to consider just injecting more personality into Deandra in this opening scene. Um, like, I'd love to know, is she timid? Is she reckless? Is she mean? Is she kind-hearted? Think of character development. You should first establish concretely what kind of person they are. You don't need to do all of that in one scene. You can do that passively throughout the book. Um, personality and characterization can be explored in so many ways. It's in how the characters speak, it's in their little quirks, how they observe the world around them. Like I'd encourage you to just play around with that a little bit more. In terms of scene versus summary, another analogy I guess that you could use is that a summary is sort of like looking at a story from a bird's eye view, but a scene is like walking through a neighborhood. You are walking on the streets itself, you are seeing all the individual people, all the houses, um, you are like living and breathing in that world. Whereas a summary is just kind of like if you had a camera, like a drone that was just like flying over the neighborhood, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's not wrong to do summaries. You have, you have to be very, very intentional with them. But one thing that I actually did, and I don't know how helpful this is gonna be, this is purely for example, um, I'm not saying like, oh my God, change your entire opening scene to literally this. I made this as sort of like a way to approach um, how to take a list of facts and events, start looking, thinking about it as um, a scene. You can see here in my example, this takes place in like a singular point in time. We're not jumping around, we're not speaking generally about the character in a bird's eye view, um, being like, you know, this is what she's going through, this is what she does on her day-to-day -day routine, this is what she's been working on for the last like five years or whatever. The reason I recommend sticking to a single point in time is because it feels more intimate and it allows the reader to get to know Deandra in context rather than as if someone else is talking about her. So kind of following the beginning, middle, end um, format that I was talking about earlier. In the beginning, maybe the opening shot is her patching up a tear in her blanket with music playing in the background on the radio. She's feeling lightheaded because it's been a while since she's had fresh air. I got this idea from some of the details that were presented in the um, here about like sort of what she does on her day to day. And mentioning that she's lightheaded because it's been a while since she's had fresh air is sort of like hinting about the aspect of this like polluted air. Um, the middle of the scene, the pot on the stove starts to boil over. She rushes to turn it off 
and uh, stirs her chicken soup. The music over the radio gets suddenly interrupted by a news report about a runaway Eidelin, or maybe about the ongoing war tensions in general. Deandra frowns and goes to shut the radio off. This right here is just like hinting at the external conflict, but it's not at all the focus of the scene. And then having her frowning to turn the radio off will imply a lot about like who she is and how, you know, she like feels about the situation that she's in. So just kind of injecting more character into the scene. Um, and then the end of the scene, she feels another bout of head pain and walks over to a notebook where she makes note of how frequently the pain comes and goes, trying to keep track of the side effects. Her notebook is worn and tattered and she's using its final pages. She's had it since her academy days, one of the only things she kept with her when she fled. We learn all these things about her that are um, many of the same ideas that were introduced in, in this um, summary here, but we're learning about it in context. So again, you don't need to lay your scene out like this at all, but that's just like one way to consider what are all the things that I need the reader to know and how can I sort of craft a scene around that rather than simply stating all of those things. Okay, the next excerpt that we're gonna be looking at is called Here Alexandria Lies, and it is a literary contemporary short story excerpt and feedback was on prose. The first time Alexandria kisses Sapphire is after her goldfish dies. Okay, I highlighted this right away because that was, oh, I literally wrote amazing. I love this. So many things to love about this sentence, but it's a little off kilter. It's a little odd. Um, I, I really liked the, I mean, obviously the contrast between um, like the connotation of the word kiss and dying in the same sentence. Um, they lie in the dappled light of sunrise, wafting in through the heart patterned curtains. Just past seven, summer heat already warming the linen sheets of the bed they share. They're huddled close with the pastel pink blankets straying to the edge of their small island. I like that detail, small island, calling the bed a small island. Um, Alexandria always kicks it off during the night despite Sapphire's best efforts. In the end, she says they don't need it and in the end, she wins out. Um, heart patterned curtains, great detail. Honestly, this entire opening paragraph is great. The details are so good. I can't, like anything that I'll say about the prose is going to be a little nitpicky. Feel free to disregard. I honestly think that this is like such a beautiful opening image. The only thing really noteworthy that I have to say here is that, first of all, I love this opening line, as it is, keep, don't even touch it. For this sentence here, they lie in the dappled light of sun, sunrise wafting in through the hard patent curtains, just past seven, summer heat already warming the linen sheets of the bed they share. This is honestly fine. Here, I'm just gonna take it out so you guys can see. Um, this is honestly like completely fine on its own. Just like one thing that I was playing around here was um, just like ways to kind of like tighten it a little bit. Dapple, I like the word dapple by the way. Um, the dappled light of sunrise. I almost like the idea of saying that the sunlight was dappling through the heart pattern curtains. It's very, very slight, um, but I think whenever you introduce the of, it um, kind of slows the sentence down a little bit, which is fine. Um, but it's just kind of an alternate way of looking at it. So yeah, it's just past seven, sunlight dappling through the heart pattern curtain, curtains, summer soaks into the bed sheets. So this image right here is, I honestly love this, the summer heat warming the linen sheets of the bed they share. Um, this is, yeah, another thing, the linen sheets of the bed um, or light of sunrise. Here I just kind of combined it, or just to sort of tighten it so you're using less words. Um, so saying sunlight instead, um, and then instead of saying linen sheets of the bed, just saying the bed sheets. But yeah, this is like already perfectly fine on its own. Here, I just kind of was playing around with the verbs. Instead of saying like the su that summer was warming the beds, which is honestly pretty good on its own. Another verb I picked was saying that summer soaks into the bed sheets, because um, I think that there's something um, very like tangible and sensory about that. The other sentence that I was playing around with here 
um, was, this is just like the same sentence, but like even shorter saying sunlight dapples through the heart pattern curtains, summer heat soaking into the bed sheets. That was like the only thing that I played around with in this opening paragraph. I honestly loved it. Okay, let's look at this next section here. Sapphire is 12 and at that age, her awareness of self is starting to click, click, click into place. Spending summer in Alexandria's back garden, sipping homemade strawberry smoothies with straw and waiting bare-legged in towels for the inflatable padding pool to fill with air. She observes her best friend in ways she hasn't before. At first, she journals about it. Ugh, these details are already so good. Uh, I'll show you kind of like what I was playing around with here. This is honestly fine. Um, Sapphire is 12 and at that age, her awareness of self is starting to click, click, click into place. There is something very playful about this. Um, I, I honestly have no issues with this. Rewrite that I put here was Sapphire is 12 and that's the age the world starts to recolor itself. So this is like a very different sort of tone. I don't know if this really matches the writer's writing style at all. Um, but I think um, it is a, it does feel a little bit familiar phrasing to say like, oh, it clicks into place. Like that, it's a very familiar phrase. So if you wanted to kind of like play around with some of that, um, this is just like in one option to do that. The other thing that I said, oh yes. Yeah, so I think that this, the all these details are so strong that I almost want the paragraph to end with those details. This idea of like, oh, she observes her best friend in ways she hasn't before. Um, I kind of moved that to the start of the sentence here um, before we go into all these details. It would be like, Sapphire is 12 and that's the age the world starts to recolor itself. She observes her best friend in ways she hasn't before, in fragments of mundane moments. And then you say, spending summer in Alexandria's back garden, sipping homemade strawberry smoothies, all of this stuff. The details are perfect. I didn't even touch them. Yeah, the other thing I added obviously was the phrase in fragments of mundane moments. It's, you don't have to say that, um, but I think anything to sort of like highlight or like punctuate that all of these details are like things that she's experienced before, but suddenly they're like new. It's like they're familiar, but they're also new. Um, so if you can find a phrase that can be used as a way to punctuate those details in that way, I think would make it even better. Yeah, okay, so then it says, at first she journals about it. Dear diary, I think I've gone insane. I think about Lex the way Lex thinks about boys all the time. Um, very adorable. I have nothing to say about that. That's great. <laughs> Um, then she thinks over it and thinks over it, thinks over the swoop in her stomach when Alexandria twists or plaits her hair, sitting on the floor between her legs while she trails the wide toothed comb over Sapphire's curls with more care than her mother would, thinks over how she allowed Sapphire to climb into her bed during their three day resi residential trip in year six and the hot water bottle warmth of her skin back then and now. I need to take a breath. <laughs> I don't have too much to say. So one option that I rewrote here is, again, this sort of repetition um, and this sort of phrase, it's fine on its own. She thinks over it and thinks over it, thinks over the swoop in her stomach. Uh, swoop in her stomach is like a little familiar phrasing, which I think you can honestly get away with, but because the rest of this paragraph is so strong, like it's literally so good, um, the first part just stood out to me. So if you wanted to like tinker with these lines a little bit, um, I almost think the, the, then she thinks over it and thinks over it, that thinks over the swoop in her stomach. I found myself like stumbling over this a little bit when I was reading it in my head. It's fine. It's like not the end of the world, but, um, I almost don't think you like need to have that repetition. Um, I think it would have the same impact if you just said she thinks about it when Alexandria sits between Sapphire's legs thin fingers plaiting her hair, trailing the wide tooth comb over her curls with more care than her mother would. She thinks about the way Alexandria let Sapphire climb into her bed um, and then blah, 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 the rest of this. Yeah, so I, obviously I know that this sort of phrasing is intentional, um, but I think it reads a little bit smoother if you write it out this way. Um, the other like minor, minor thing that I changed was here, right, so it says that Alexandria is plaiting her hair, sitting on the floor between her legs. I just like swapped the two details so that it says that Alexandria sits between Sapphire's legs first and then you go into the imagery of her hair. 
um it's a super minor thing and the only reason i did it is because i think like the image first of sitting down in between her legs and then having her play with sapphire's hair um just kind of made sense from like a continuity perspective it's just like opening with that really striking image it's like i could honestly feel the warmth coming out of this paragraph like the the heart pumping warmth and this detail here hot water bottle warmth of her skin back then and now is crazy good i love this i love this so much okay the last paragraph here now with her eyes closed all sprawled out on the mattress sapphire's heart lurches with a new thought tell her it isn't the right time though seven in the morning sunny simmering saturday morning yesterday's grief is sure to roll over in today sapphire knows alexandria too well so now is certainly not the time <sighs> okay um honestly i am in love with this i love this so much so i've made a couple changes here i really really love like the setup of this scene where it's like it's just like a normal saturday and she just like gets this urge to tell her her best friend that she's in love with her but then kind of stops herself because it's just now is certainly not the time you know like her goldfish just died and it's just this is like a, a moment that i don't want to ruin type thing i love the feel of that um so i just kind of made a little bit of like a tweak on the prose here i said she turns the words over in her head like she's turning over a stone and sapphire realizes she doesn't know what's waiting for her underneath seven in the morning with alexandria grieving the death of her goldfish in the languid hours of a lazy saturday certainly isn't the right time for so much honesty i feel like you have some license here to use some figurative language so, so this is just one example if you can come up with some sort of like image to really punctuate the feeling of what it feels like to be on the cusp of a love confession, you know? The other reason that I kind of like rearranged the sentence here was obviously the morning and the morning. Um, I kind of got tripped up on that uh, when I was reading it. And then I also like explicitly brought back the goldfish just because on the first time that I was reading it, this mention of the grief, I feel like it's it might be clearer to sort of like remind the reader that it's the grief of the goldfish that was mentioned way at the start. Because I think by the time you get to like the end of the scene, the reader might have forgotten about that. Um, maybe not, but it's it's worth considering. So yeah, I don't know if this is like super in line with the writer's writing style, but you know, when you're ending off this like gorgeous, languid, heart pumping romantic scene i think you definitely have some space um definitely have some space to not go flowery but definitely dip into some of that figurative language um because you've earned it <laughs> you've earned it the writer has such a great sense of detail like the specificity is flowing and in such a short amount of word count i i feel so entrenched in sapphire's head and in this crush and how it's affecting her um i love that the crush on uh alexandria is actually never stated with that word i think that's really really strong honestly i would like die to read the rest of this piece if um and like just to see like where these characters go i immediately feel so invested in these characters and that details when you're able to like really pinpoint the right ones they have such a way of making characters feel more lived in and it's so much easier to connect with them so everything i said was honestly really nitpicky it's just a way to kind of like um improve flow in some places and tighten up some of the phrasing but honestly it was so good please let me know if you ever finish this piece if you um submit it anywhere i would love to read it i would love to read it um so that is all i can get to for this video but thank you guys so much for watching thank you again to all of the writers who submitted i know that there were a few more pieces that were submitted that i couldn't get to it's honestly just the timing thing it it these types of videos definitely take way way longer i anticipated um because you know i don't believe in giving like careless feedback i appreciate you guys again trusting me with your work it means a lot and i had so much fun reading all of the pieces even the ones that i couldn't get to but yeah if you guys want more edit with me videos let me know yeah that is all i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope all of your writing projects are going well and i will see you in the next one Bye.